Well, I think designing for, for the world that we want to live in means we ask ourselves, what is the right? What is the wrong? What is the good? What is the bad? What is the beautiful? What is the ugly? I'm William McDonough, and I'm an architect and designer and the co-author of Cradle to Cradle. Cradle to Cradle is something that I conceived with Dr. Michael Braungart, German chemist. And essentially, it's different than cradle to grave. The current linear economy is take, make, waste. And what we're looking at is eliminating the concept of waste. So it's take, make, retake, remake, restore. So essentially, the idea is that in the world today, there are two kinds of nutrients. Biological nutrients, which is nature, us, and then technical nutrients, which are the materials we form and reform, and that we can keep them separate. So things that go back to soil are meant to be safe and healthy. Things that go back to industry are meant to be recycled in ways that are propitious for many generations. And we try not to let the technical world contaminate the biological world and vice versa. So cradle to cradle in biological and technical nutrition. And then in circular economies with renewable energy, clean water, and social fairness. Well, I see design as a signal of human intention. So what are intentions? If we look at what's happening to the planet, and then we ask ourselves, is this our design? Is it our intention? to put millions and billions of pounds of highly hazardous material in the water and in the air and so on. Is that our intention? And if it's not our intention, what is our intention? So design is the first signal of human intention. So if you intend for things to go back to cycles and not contaminate the world, that changes your design. So we stop designing things for end of life because we might succeed, whatever that means. So we say design for next use. And that's just a different way of thinking. So your intention is to design something that has a next use. And that changes the way you design things. So if you start with your human values, then you can go to principal behavior. You can move to visions of the future. You can set your goals, strategies, tactics, metrics, and produce value. The problem if you just start with value is you're starting with number. And then you can get to tactics, strategies, and goals, but you never get to your actual values of what is the right and the wrong. Cradle to Cradle applies so broadly to the human experience that everyone in the process of a building uh, can get engaged with it, and they do at various levels. For the people selecting a site, you start to think about the air quality, you think about the transportation, you think about all the issues of what does it mean to be in a place. And so those issues about could I have access to air, light, energy, and so on, become fundamental to site selection. Then if you look at the designing of a building, for an architect, you know, we famously say God is in the details. So we, we look at that. Engineers say the devil's in the details, but so details matter. So for both, the details really matter. And then in engineering especially, we say, you know, in God we trust, all others bring data. So we, we end up with this idea of beauty and what is the right thing to do, and that really does get designers engaged. And then we look at what is the technical performance and how do we do that with exquisite grace and so on. So the idea of asking what is the right thing to do, I think is an important one. And then we can show our skills and our, our ability to function there. So I think the design community, the engineers, the architects, they love this kind of thing. If we bring cradle to cradle to say technical materials in our language, then you end up with a building like this. It's designed for disassembly, so if some point in history, this building is no longer needed in this context, all these materials are designed to go back to industry. That means they're actually still perpetual commodities, which means the building has residual value. So instead of having to tear down a building and pay for it to be removed, you actually sell the parts. So as far as the long-term economics go, it's an asset instead of a liability. The other thing that's strange and wonderful is for example, on the carpets, we, we design these carpets. They're not made of PVC, which can give us dioxins and other concerning materials. They're actually a thermoplastic polyolefin with a nylon that can be chemically recycled. But they're also free of carcinogens, mutagens, teratogens, and so on. So these are healthy materials. 
Now, when you look at that, we call them products of service. What you want is the service of the carpet, not the ownership of the molecules. You never put in the order for thermoplastic polyolefin and nylon and safe dyes. You want carpet, and why? It's for acoustics, it's for appearance, comfort underfoot, cleanliness, and so on. So it's really those services you're wanting from the carpet. So in Cradle to Cradle, the company is delighted to get it back because it is the technical nutrient of their material. In other words, they're storing their raw materials on your floors. That's amazing. So the warehouse is the marketplace. And so it's really not a resource per se, although of course it is. It's a resource because you resource it when you pick it up and provide new ones. But the key thing is you've got a relationship. You're in relationship with the customer because you're storing your raw materials on their floor. So when you come to pick it up, when they want a different color, instead of destroying the world, you're picking up your raw materials, delivering a new one. It's renewably powered. Let's have fun. So it saves the industry. It allows the carpet industry to be perpetuated. We don't have to mine new materials to do it. And so it's cradle to cradle. And in the process, you just provided clean air and comfort and appearance. I think of cradle to cradle as a 20 year overnight sensation because I think that for me, it's hardly, hardly uh, penetrated because this kind of thing takes time. The, one of the aspects of cradle to cradle, the first is material health and safety and safe for biological and technical systems. And the second is circular economy, which is the reuse, the regeneration, the compostability of various things, that kind of thing. That's second. And we have circular economy second because we like to talk about goods and services. What if you made bads? What if things were actually toxic? Well, if you had a circular economy of bad things, it's worse. So circular doesn't make it a good. So you start with the good and then you do it again. Right? And that's what's happened now is that the circular economy has now become something with quite a bit of excitement around it. When we published Cradle to Cradle in China, we called it the design of the circular economy. The 12th and 13th five-year plans of China are called the circular economy. We now, I was the chair of the Meta Council for the Circular Economy at the World Economic Forum. So that's taken a, a lot of, of hold in the marketplace, in the, in the minds, which is wonderful. So I think that idea of circular has taken hold. And the part I like is that also people are realizing that cradle to cradle, which is circular and healthy and renewable energy and clean water for all children and social fairness is a bigger multi-attribute approach. And so once you get your head wrapped around any piece of it, you realize it's a whole. And so that's why I think it's exciting to watch people just rise to the occasion.